Hello, my name is Brittany Moshes and I'm a doctorate of physical therapy student at the University of Kentucky. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about why we should be choosing physical therapy as our first line of defense over musculoskeletal pain, especially that of the chronic nature, instead of the use of opioids. So to give us a little bit of background information over the opioid epidemic, since about the 1980s, there has been a major increase in the prescription of opioids, which has been a big contributing factor to the increase in opioid abuse and deaths that we've been experiencing in the United States. Chronic pain seems to be the underlying reason as to why we've been experiencing this big increase, primarily due to the fact that we just really didn't know any other option to treat this type of pain. In 2018 alone, it was reported that 10.3 million people misuse their prescription opioid. So what exactly is addiction? According to the Center on Addiction, it is classified as a complex disease of the body and the brain that involves compulsive use of one or more substances despite serious health and social consequences. So some of these health consequences that we might be experiencing are disruptions in different parts of the brain that are linked to things like reward, motivation, and judgment. The social consequences that we might be experiencing are troubles with families, relationships, and any type of work or school obligation. So how exactly do you become addicted? Addiction is almost synonymous with the reward center that we have located in the limbic system of our brain. In this area, we are able to seek pleasure. The pleasure that we seek, we are going to start to link with motivation as we're gonna to wanna to be able to repeat this feeling or experience. Dopamine is gonna be the main neurotransmitter that we're going to associate with this circuitry. So how does this all work? When our body experiences any type of pleasure, the reward system that I had mentioned earlier becomes activated. Upon this activation, electrical signals are generated and that will cause the release of dopamine. So, when we have a natural experience of pleasure, there is a controlled increase in the amount of dopamine released and the dopamine will carry a chemical message to the whole entire body with this idea of pleasure. With this increased amount of dopamine, the brain is able to start to learn and adapt so we can continue to experience this feeling moving forward. So where exactly do all the drugs come in? When opioids enter the body, they're going to hijack this reward system and a massive amount of dopamine is released. With this increase in dopamine released in the body, it's gonna to begin to experience euphoria and a relieving sense of pain, which is exactly why the opioids are being prescribed in the first place. They're wanting to relieve pain. So, when this massive influx occurs in brain centers such as the hippocampus, they're going to start to create memories of this euphoric and pain-relieving feeling so the brain can create a connection with the drug and this type of feeling. Over time, the brain and the body are going to become used to this level of drug, and in order to feel the same way, a person is going to need to increase the amount of drug being taken, and this is where our problems only begin. So since we're talking about opioids and the aspect of pain relief, let's talk a little bit about what exactly pain is. So pain is produced in the brain when it perceives danger, to, when it perceives any type of danger, and action is gonna be needed to relieve any type of pain. I'm gonna discuss pain mainly in the aspect of nociceptive nature. This means that there is actual damage or a threat of damage to bodily tissue. Most conditions that we um, experience in the clinic are in relation to this type of mechanical or chemical nature, which would be that of the nociceptive sensation. So there's gonna be three different stages to musculoskeletal pain. First, we have our acute phase, which is any type of pain due to actual damage or a potential for damage to body tissue. This is gonna last anywhere from around one to four weeks. We then move into the subacute phase, and this is gonna be kind of an in-between phase between that acute pain and then that of the chronic nature. As long as this stage goes undisrupted, we're gonna continue on into healing. This stage can last anywhere from four to 12 weeks. If we experience a disruption at this stage, this is when our condition becomes chronic. And chronic pain is gonna be any type of pain that persists longer than it was, is normally warranted for any type of condition. This could be primarily due to any type of unsuccessful treatment for pain. 
This is going to last for three months or more, and if this chronic pain persists in the body, the phenomenon of central sensitization is likely to develop. Next, we're going to discuss a little bit about what effects chronic pain has on the brain. So chronic pain is maintained in the body due to that phenomenon that I had mentioned earlier, central sensitization. As the brain continues to experience pain, different regions are going to start to make changes. And now any type of light stimulus, like a touch on the arm, is going to become amplified and cause an immense amount of pain. So what used to be a relatively normal reaction to touch is now causing a great amount of pain. Through physical therapy, we are able to use pain neuroscience education to explain just exactly how pain works and get to the root of the problem and try to eliminate any type of central sensitization. So why choose physical therapy? The American Physical Therapy Association describes physical therapists as movement experts who improve quality of life through exercise, hands-on care, and patient education. They then go on to say that we create treatment plans to manage pain and other chronic conditions. In our description of what we do, it explicitly mentions that we manage pain, especially that of the chronic nature. So why wouldn't anyone choose physical therapy as their first choice for management of chronic pain? According to the CDC, they recently stated that healthcare providers should reduce the use of opioids and opt for safer avenues such as physical therapy for the treatment of long-term pain. Physical therapists are going to use movement and education to treat pain at its physiologic source. Opioids are only really focused on masking the pain and never really getting to the true cause of the problem. They just want to alleviate any type of sensation of pain so you don't feel it. As mentioned before, when we feel this pain relief, our body craves this feeling and we want to take more and more of the opioid and that's just where our problems begin. So I hope I was able to give you a little bit more information about why physical therapy needs to be the first line of defense for chronic pain management. Be sure to check out our other videos in this toolkit for a more in-depth explanation of different advantages physical therapy serves in the combat of chronic pain.